Hi, <clears throat> this is Stephen Van Campen Lewis uh, here in Austin, Texas. It's uh, <clears throat> it's early February, middle of the afternoon. Um, it's warm here in the greenhouse. It's so kind of chilly outside, but uh, I figured I'd talk to you guys a little bit today about uh, experimentation and how experimenting with your orchids really, really helps you as a grower and and experimenting with with a lot of different techniques is valuable and beginners should do it, intermediate growers should do it, advanced growers should do it, everybody should experiment. Um, don't be afraid to branch out and, and try new stuff. You know, there's a lot of people all around the world growing in lots of different conditions, but they're probably growing the same orchids you are. Um, so they often experiment and they typically or often have have a lot of good advice uh, that can be applicable to your own growing conditions. So if you have been growing orchids the same way for years and years and years, you know, maybe you don't want to try something new. But I bet you're missing out. You know, I, I, I kind of fancied myself as a, a pretty good catacetum and catlea grower. For, I've been growing those guys for forever, for decades. And, you know, there's always something new. You know, the PET method, for example, um, is is a method that I've, I've talked about a lot on this, this channel, and it's really successful for me. Um, and to, to be honest, I it, it took a lot of years for me to switch over uh, because I was doing just fine growing uh, catacetums in in regular old sphagnum moss in a pot and that's sort of the most common way to grow catacetums but boy I'm glad I switched I'm glad I took that first step <clears throat> I'm glad I experimented and I'm really glad that I switched over to PET and I hadn't made I wouldn't have made that switch if I hadn't taken a chance and so uh, I kinda wanna talk to you guys a little bit today about a the value of experimentation and B talk about some of the experiments that I'm doing right now um, and uh, well let's let's jump right into it so uh, the first experiment that I'm working on right now um, involves cypress mulch so we had a speaker come uh, to our orchid society a few months ago and he pots all of his his orchids no matter what what genera uh, in cypress mulch so cypress of course is a big tree that is, is uh, very common um, in the southern part of the United States, and it makes great mulch. So uh, this gentleman came to us and with, with many, many, many years of experience and said that he takes cypress mulch, which is super cheap, uh, it takes a long time to break down, and he adds perlite to it, uh, sort of open up the mix, and um, you know uh, he would add more perlite to his cattleyas, and then less perlite to his his uh, slipper orchids, you know, to sort of increase or decrease the drainage. So, uh, a grower in my society, she got a, a bag of uh, cypress mulch, and she had way too much, and she decided to give me a little bit, well, a little bit, quite a bit, to experiment with, and. As you can see, this particular mulch is pretty fine. It's it's a lot smaller than what I'm used to. I, I typically use the large grade orchiata, and I can pot my, my orchids in just straight up orchiata and not mix anything in and do really, really well. Really well. Um, so I don't necessarily have a whole lot of incentive to switch over, but when I get this, I might as well try it. And so um, I, I'm a little hesitant to use it on my cat, catleas because I am really successful with orchiata, but orchiata is really expensive. So, you know, something that's really cheap and has proven to be a, a good media it is an intriguing experiment for me. It's something that I want to play with. Um, so before I jump into uh, catleas, A, I need to buy perlite, which I don't have. So I'll have to pick some of that up and mix it into this stuff and see how it does. But B, um, there's other there's other genera that I can try with. So I'm experimenting with my with my cat my uh, my catacetums 
And this is Tenebrosum by Colosum. This is one that I got from Fred Clark at the Houston workshop in April, excuse me, in August of 2019. And uh, it's just starting to come back to life here, as you can see. And so I potted up in my, my usual PET method, but this mulch is, is pretty fine. Um, and I think it's gonna hold moisture pretty well. So I'm, I'm experimenting with a bunch of my uh, catacetum types as I repot them into uh, the PET method or, or as I just kind of move them around and, and repot. Maybe some of the old sphagnum is, it needs to be replaced. So instead of sphagnum, which is also kind of expensive, the, especially the long fiber uh, brand that I use is, is, uh, is Best Grow. There's uh, some, some, I believe it's Japanese lettering on the front of the package. It's, it's orange and clear and green. And it's New Zealand long fiber sphagnum, which is absolutely amazing. I love that stuff, but it's, it, it's pricey. So if I have a product that's not so pricey and works just as well, Maybe I'll switch. I don't know. I won't know until I experiment. So um, that's what I'm doing with the, the cypress mulch right now. Before I start switching over some of my, my cattleyas behind me into cypress mulch, I'm, I'm already trying it on some of my catacetums. Uh, I guess actually, uh, this is an interesting segue here. You'll see this little, this little guy here. Uh, that's my other experiment that I want to tell you about. So um, some years ago, in fact, I believe it was May 2017, Sue Bottom wrote an article for AOS Orchids Magazine, and she talked about this product called Purely Organic, and it's, it's this powdered fertilizer that, as you can imagine, is organic, and is, uh, therefore made with natural ingredients, some kind of amazing voodoo magic. You should read the article. Uh, it's really, really compelling. So I ended up buying a package that's humongous for really cheap. It, it's a really inexpensive fertilizer. Um, the, the business owner is old school. They sent me the package and then I paid for it, which I didn't realize people still do. Um, so they are sort of old school, but you know the results of Sue Bottom's article, uh, the pictures, uh, and the growers that she had spoken to in her society and their results, were, it was really, really compelling. <clears throat> so I got some, and then I kind of let it sit for a while, and, you know, it's it's February 2020, and I haven't really done much with it. So, uh, like I said, it's, it's this big, giant brick thing uh, that I've gotten, and I've, I've started using it in my garden and, and outside more. And But I, I'm experimenting with the orchids, because that's, that's really what I want it for. So... Um, this is a slow-release fertilizer uh, that's in a powder form, and let me get, here's a bunch of it. As you can see, it's very fine, um, but it does hold moisture. So there are, um, there's a couple different ways you can use it. You can sprinkle it on the top of your media, and but if you have large grade bark like I do for all all these guys back here, um, that's just going to wash out. <clears throat> so some people have started sort of making a slurry with 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 this stuff. They'll mix it into a bunch of water and, and get it to some really thick paste consistency. Uh, they'll dry it out and it, and it supposedly breaks off into these these big chunks that you can just sit on top of your your orchid media. Um, I do want to try that. I have so much of this bloody fertilizer that uh, I might as well try it that way. Uh, I haven't done it yet, but but I've I've started making smaller cakes with teaspoons um, with some success. I'm not super excited about it, but I found that these little dealies, which I got, I think a hundred on hundred of these on Amazon for like ten bucks, um, hundred of these, and they're really good at holding this stuff. So you, you think that this powdered stuff and the, this little basket dealy um, with lots of holes wouldn't really work, but you, know, you just scoop it in. You see it falling out, but if you squish it down really hard, 
it makes this cake that doesn't really come out. So most of that is still in there. And once you squish it down, it turns into this, this hard little brick thing that just sort of dissolves over time. And supposedly, uh, this will break down in about three months. So the recommendation from Sue is to use this purely organic stuff right as the, the plants are waking up. Uh, and, and whether that, that's cattleyas or the catacetums or, or whatever, whatever you're growing, as it starts to wake up, this is the time when you want to use it. So I'm, I'm, I'm putting this stuff into all of my pots. Um, you know, it's February. Everything is kind of waking up or is already in active growth. So what the heck, I don't have time to start messing around with individual plants. Everybody gets treated the same way. So everybody gets the same fertilizer. Everybody gets watered at the same time. Uh, which is typically daily in the, in our hot Texas summer, and um, I just don't have time or patience to sort of baby certain plants when you have over a hundred of them. You know, it really behooves you to just treat everything the same and um, adjust your media accordingly. So uh, all these guys over here, like I said, get watered every day, and this uh, this new new fertilizer that I'm using, uh, I'm going to have in there for three months, and then I'm going to switch over to my time release NutriCoat, which I typically use. And the cool thing about the NutriCoat is, um, rather than sprinkling it on top, I can I can put it in these things very easily. Um, so my dose is, for, for all of my catacetums, I'm filling up one of these to the top. They're heavy feeders. They like it. Uh, for my cattleyas and my other plants, um, basically anything. So this is a plant that I got for free at the Society. It, it has no tag, no nothing. Uh, it's a, a dendrobium of some sort. I don't typically get these, but you know what the heck. Uh, it was free, and it was from a, a grower who... Uh, was no longer able to care for his plants and so I figured I would take it in and, and do some experiments on it. So for anything in this size pot or larger I also fill up one of these to the top. Um, for pots that are much larger I'm adding two or even three uh, of these and we'll see how that goes. For pots that are smaller um, I will uh, I'll only fill this thing up halfway. So, for example, this is about halfway-ish. So I would put this, these in one of the pots that are smaller than the one that I just showed you. Uh, for the really young seedlings, I'll put even less in. Or uh, for the for the little little guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna be def not deflasking. I'm gonna be unpotting a community pot and putting those into uh, their sort of forever homes. Their their two inch pots. And of course, I will record it and show y'all. Um, but when I do that, I'm probably just going to sprink sprinkle some of this stuff on top. Um, so that's that's how you want to treat it for your orchids that are in large media. If you're growing anything in sphagnum, you could probably just sprinkle it on top. Take a, a teaspoon or a tablespoon or, or, or whatever you decide to use. Um, Sue Bottom has a lot of really good measurements that she recommends in her article. And um, yeah, so those are the two experiments that I'm doing right now. I, I do want to mention the, the purely organic stuff. It's a little stinky. I notice it every time I walk into the greenhouse. If you're growing indoors, maybe you don't want to use it. It's not super pungent, but it's certainly there. And if you have a significant other who is not as into orchids as I am or you are, uh, they might be a little frustrated. Uh, also, if you have dogs or cats, um, I haven't noticed any of the animals going for this, but uh, you know, stinky things that kind of smell a little oceany or a little a little fishy uh, might be delicious for pets that that are not my own. So, just something to think about and consider when you're using this. Um, apparently, it's very effective. So, 
I, you know, I really want to tell you that a again, experimenting is good. Uh, B, I'm experimenting all the time, and it helps me as a grower. Um, it helps me as someone who's able to then, you know, relay my, my information to you. You know, who knows? In three months, all these guys, all these guys behind me could be dead because I killed them with this fertilizer. I suspect that's not the case. More than likely, I'm gonna have a success story for y'all. Um, but who knows? That's part of experimenting. So with that, uh, I'm I'm all done. And if if you like this show, please click like, share it, subscribe. You know the usual YouTube thing that people talk about at the end of the show. Bye.